Hi, good morning guys. Uh, this is going to be part two in a little series that I'm uploading for the newbies or some guys that uh, they might be working for a freight broker or an agent um, right now. And, well, they're just having a difficulty finding freight, which I don't understand why it's so difficult to find freight. There's freight all over the place. There's going to be over a trillion dollars worth moved this year. Now, some of you guys are going to watch these videos and go right to work on them if you're working for another broker. And, hey, that's cool. You know, uh, I'll help you out if I can. You know, some of you newbies, uh, I want you to watch the videos just to kind of get an idea how a broker or an agent should do his job. Um, this industry, you're going to get a lot of people that are going to give you a lot of bad information. They're going to tell you that they're doing so well and things of that nature. Well, the problem is half of them don't even broker freight themselves. You know, and there's a lot of these guys on YouTube that tell you that uh, they do, you know, that they broker freight and they're going to uh, show you how to make all kinds of hundreds of thousands of dollars and most of them have never moved a load. All right, which I'll just say buyer beware. Now, let's get right to it. I'm going to make a little five, six minute video. I'm going to show you kind of how to find some people. The first thing is you got to learn to search. You know, back in the days before the internet, like in the mid 90s, um, we used to have to have to buy sales directories and things of that nature. I mean, you had to invest a lot of money purchasing information. With, now with the advent of the internet, I mean, it's just all over the place. You know, um, we're going to focus on principally three different types of freight. The first thing that we're going to look at right here, um, this is going to be, you know, refri mostly refrigerated stuff. All right. And we're going to go to the Iowa Department of Agricultural's website. All right. Now, the first thing is when you're looking for, if you're going to run meats and you're going to run vegetables and things of that na nature, there's a lot of, and even bulk um, product like grains or DDG or things like that, you can go to your local state websites for either the Department of Agriculture or USDA. You know, they have marketing programs where they will put these lists out there of the companies that are producing the stuff that could be potential shippers to you. And that's not just, you know, these agencies. There's several others for other that you can use for other different types of freight. I'm just going to focus on these. All right. So I'm on the Iowa Department of Agriculture's website right now. And you get here by basically you're going to go down here. You're going to go to bureaus. That's the link I just clicked right there. If you go to bureaus, then you'll pop out. You, you see this link here, meat and poultry inspection. That's one link. But let's go to the grain, you know, the grain white warehouse right now. All right. We hit the grain warehouse. Let's look list of licensed grain dealers. Let's just go ahead and click the HTML. Select all. Now, they don't put the links to their websites and email addresses and things like that. Now, what these are, either they're going to be grain warehouses, grain bins, or commodities tra traders, all right? Now, for a lot of you out there that don't know, you know, if you're in Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Nebraska, bulk freight is money. These loads are not going to go 500, 600, 700 miles for the most part. Most of them are going to be short runs, especially if you're dealing with corn or something like that because it's, they're going to an ethanol plant somewhere. So you might get a contract with a grain bin that might, and I'll give you an actual contract I had um, not too long ago. It was coming from T, South Dakota, and it was going to Sioux Center, Iowa. It was a 21-mile run. But here are the benefits of that. That grain warehouse would load and unload 24 hours a day and the loading facility which was an ethanol plant would load and unload 24 hours a day so I would put the same trucks on these and the same truck might do 15 to 20 runs a day now when you're running freight like this you're getting paid on weight you're getting paid either by the bushel by the ton by the yard you know, and it all depends upon your shipper how you're going to get paid. The type of equipment that you're going to use is going to be determined by the shipper. Sometimes, most of the times, they're going to run hoppers or high-side hoppers. That way, it dumps out the bottom of the trailer. 
Occasionally, they'll take what's called a walking floor trailer or an end dump, all right, because it's a bulked product. Now, when you're running this freight, you'll negotiate a rate. In my particular rate that I had, I was being paid 26 cents a bushel. Now, each one of these hoppers, and you'll have to learn your equipment here, guys, which you should know that already if you're moving freight, but each hopper will run about 920 bushel. All right, so if you do the math, it's going to come up to almost 50,000 pounds. You know, um, you're going to have to know your weights and measures and what a bushel is, what a cubic ton is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But each hopper would run about 920 bushel. I was getting trucks for 21 cents a bushel. Now, when you're getting and billing out your customer at 26 cents a bushel for 920 bushel, if you run the math on that, it's going to break down, if you do 920 bushel, about 200 some dollars a load. They're not a lot of profit on the load, you would think. But if you're making 40 bucks a load and the guy's doing 15 loads a day, you're going to make bank. Because I didn't tell you the, the end of the story. When you go, go to one of these grain bins after harvest time, I had five and a half million bushel to run. It's a mountain of grain. Now, I did not move at all. There were other, there were other people involved in moving this freight. They just couldn't find enough trucks. And so, uh, so often that's the case when you're doing something like that. But when you get up with one of these shippers here, and every one of these guys are shipping on this list, all right, and you learn the bulk feed industry or the bulk industry, you can make a lot of money. It's just over and over and over and over and over and over again. The, thing, the beautiful thing about it is you don't have to go searching for trucks. Once you put a truck on it or a trucking company on it, they'll continue to run the loads until the job are done. It might be a two or a three or a four-week contract, something like that. It could be two months. It all depends on what the yield is like how much is going, you know, if, if the corn's wet or dry. And this is where you learn a little bit about the freight that you're actually moving. This, there are so many agents out there that are robots, all right? Um, if they're working for a bigger brokerage, you're probably working in a setting where there's, um, if you will, it's almost like a casino with a pit boss and a floor boss. This guy will say, okay, tell him to just get on the phone and start calling, find a truck, give him this rate, all right? They really occupy and they have a completely mundane existence because they really know nothing of the freight that they're moving. They're nothing more than a glorified truck finder. And that's fine. They serve a purpose too. But if you truly want to excel in this job and make money, you're going to have to learn the freight you're running. You're going to have to learn the equipment that it runs on. All right. The, the legal stuff on how to handle insurance and claims and all that other stuff, that's what the broker is going to do for you. And, well, I can teach you that too, but that's, that's not the point. We're talking about moving freight, selling freight, making money. All right? Now, when you're running the agricultural stuff, you go to your, your Department of Agriculture websites, and all of them have a marketing bureau, and you just have to get in your individual state, they'll have more services available. You know, since these guys are in Iowa, you know, they got corn and grains, all right? Or other than corn and grains, they're going to have meat, all right? So we'll back out of here real quick to where we just were. We'll just go to meat and poultry inspection. And we just want to go to Iowa licensed meat and poultry plants. Once again, we're going to just click submit all. And they're going to run these guys down the list here. Now, just for the sake of time, and I've got a couple of the links I want to show you, I want to focus on these guys right here. Agristar Meat and Poultry. Now, they're going to be hard to get on the phone. They're very hard to get on the phone. I've actually run a lot of freight for them. What these guys run are kosher foods. All right, now you're, imagine this. I'm going to draw a picture for you. You could believe this or not. You're in Postville, Iowa. All right, you're in the middle of nowhere. You're in Postal, Iowa, and there are probably 30 to 40 rabbis. And for those of you that, don't know, that do not know what a rabbi is, he's basically a Jewish holy man for the Jewish religion. And 
you're thinking, why are there 30 or 40, that many rabbis in such a little town? Well, because this is a kosher processing plant. And they only load, for that, that meat to be considered kosher, it can only load at certain times of the day. It has to be slaughtered with tools and equipment that have been blessed by a rabbi. They will literally bless the trailers that it's loaded on. All right? They can only load it from sundown to sun up. All right? So there's very specialized loading times. But the demand for kosher foods and kosher meats is huge. And they have some great lanes coming out of there. Generally, you can only get them on the email, so you'll have to track down their website and stuff like that. Or you can leave a message because most of them work of a night. All right? Um, but you go to a place like this, and you get them on the phone. They're always looking for brokers. All right, or trucks. This is where a good dedicated truck following is going to help you out. You know, whether you're running, if you're running reefers, because it is some very, very good paying freight. All right. Now, you're going to see if you cruise down the list some of these guys, and you're going to have to qualify them because it'll say type of plant. All right. Some of those, like where it says type of plant, C U S T, it's like a custom plant. That's a little meat locker. That's where you take your deer when you're at deer hunting. And you want to get in, you, you, you pull a big 10, 12 pound, 10, 12 point book, buck, I'm sorry. And you take it down and you get it slaughtered, get some sausage made. That's your little guy. He's not, he's not going to be shipping. You look at the ones that say like FSB on them, Advanced Brands, Agristar Meat and Poultry. These are distributors, all right? That's what you want to go with. Americold Logistics, all right? You want to um, go after those guys. Those are your bigger boys, as on this list where it says FSB, those are you guys that <coughs> are going to be shipping all the time. Now, that being said, you know, this is reefer freight. They might have some dried and smoked meats, but primarily reefer. So if you've got a good truck following, you know, go there. Use your Department of Agricultural websites. You'll build a much better shipper list. Believe me. All right, now we're going to bounce over here to produce. This is the produce market guide. This is an industry trade website. Now you're going to look over here at the listings here on the right-hand side, browse by category. You're going to see the Allied Produce Retailer Trade Association Transportation. Ignore the transportation. All these trucking companies and brokers will run their ad on this site. Nobody looks at them. All right, but let's look at the produce category, 36,336 links. All right. Now, if she's going to cooperate, this site has been down in the last two or three days, and hopefully it's going to work this morning. If not, we'll just leave the front page on, and it doesn't appear it's going to go to any of the links this morning, but it's, it's just been having some site difficulty. But either way, I'll tell you about the site. The produce market guide here, what it is, it features growers, packers, shippers, produce brokers, It'll have freight brokers already on there that are running ads, but like I said, that uh, don't even worry about those guys. You'll find a shipper for every type of produce that is available. Some shippers ship multiple different types of produce. And what they'll do once you uh, get into the listings, all right, you'll see some of the featured listings here, all right, that uh, from the different companies. But they'll have their independent listings with the name of the traffic manager, phone number, fax number email address, and things of that nature, all right? They'll have all that information available to you. You just have to get on the phone and talk to them. Primarily, most of this is reefer freight. Now, when you're running produce, you're going to be running for two different types of customers. Your, the best money is going to come from your end user, your, your produce wholesaler, in your markets, in your terminal markets. Like um, if you go up to New York, Hunts Point, all these guys that are produce wholesalers that are su they're selling to restaurants and schools and casinos and things of that nature. After that, it's going to come from a produce broker. That's going to be your second best client. After him, it's going to be the, the, the packer. And after him, it's going to be the grower. All right. Now, that's in list of how much money you can make. The grower is going to pay you the least, 
because he wants to make more money for himself. Then the packer, he, he basically is going to skim your freight rate to put more money in his pocket. You know, these packers might charge these end users, let's say they'll charge them seven, eight thousand dollars for a load and they'll try to pay you six. You know, and what they're doing is taking the profit off the top. It's always best to find the end user on a product um, when it comes to that. So, and that's on any type of freight, all right? The produce market guy doesn't look like it's going to cooperate this morning. All right, but we'll go back there another day. All right, but remember that website, ProduceMarketGuide.com. Now, we're going to go over here to McCray's Blue Book. Now, this is an industrial search engine. Whether you've been here or not, I've talked about it before here on YouTube, and it's a very, very, very good site. I have made a million dollars off this site over the course of probably four years. You can believe that. You know, some of you guys out there are only making 30, 40 grand a year as a freight broker or agent. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> that's all I can do is apologize. You don't know how to do your job. Contact me, and I'll show you how to do it correctly. But McCray's has about 14, 15 million listings on it. All right. Now, let me show you what you get here. Let's just go into CNC machines. Now, that's a milling machine, and it's an industrial it's basically an industrial machine, and you sh they ship a lot on flatbeds and step decks. Well, if you go down with the listings, there's several subcategory headings here, CNC machine maintenance, ma machine repair services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm going to go, hey, the war in numbers. CNC machinery, 641 listings. Now, they display them two different ways. They'll give a short description right here, the name of the company, and the city that it's located in. Or you can just break them down, and over here on the right, CNC machinery company serving, they'll break them down by state. Now, a lot of you guys that don't know this, you know, um, and I'll teach you how to really use this if you enroll in our webinars. I'll show you how to really make money off this thing. Um, but a lot of times you want to focus on your different lanes and states and things of that nature. Now up top here where it says related products, these are referred to as vertical industries. Well, if they're going to be in this, then somebody else might be closely related to this. All right, so you've got 641 companies here that are making CNC lathes and things of that nature. All right, well, you want to start calling them, but you're going to have also vertical industries that make something very similar. You know, so you, you click steel machinery, all right? And you're going to have, let's just scroll down here, how many pages, you know, and that they're going to have, and they'll just break it down even more so with another vertical industry that is going to be shipping. Steel machinery, alloys, steel bars, plates, steel. All these guys are going to be shipping. All this industrial freight, it's going to load on flatbed step decks. Now, just to kind of give you an, a little bit of uh, information on what these shippers look like, all right? Now, they'll give you the name of the company, their website, phone, fax, all the address. That's what you're going to need for billing and to check credit on them anyway. They give you a more comprehensive description of what they're doing, all right? And... Like right here, they're they're telling you what they you're you're gonna get an idea, you know, estimate shipping rates from Rome, Georgia to whatever. You know, please co contact Advanced Steel Technology for a complete quote. All right. Some of these guys will actually have on here for truckload, so they're they're shipping dry vans and they're also shipping pallets. All right. Now ignore that rate information. That's basically uh, they're dealing with an online rating system, probably through one of their carriers and things of that nature. And you know, they're just doing that to pull you in, if you will, if you're a prospective buyer. But it does give you some good information about these guys that they are shipping. All right. Now all these guys will be shipping especially when you're running industrial freight and things of that nature, but it just tells you go after them. Now you have even more so related companies within 50 miles of these guys. Now all of these might not be completely related, you know, but there will be other companies in their, in their same area 
So if you got a truck that's running for you on a regular basis for these guys here, he might, or the same trucking company might be willing to pick up some of this type of freight. All right, but then it looks like within about 30 miles of them, they got some other good manufacturers. All right, well, I'm going to back out of here, and I'm going to go right back to my original search, which was CNC. All right, and you're going to see your your companies, and I saw a link here that I know about, and I've actually killed it a couple times. The surplus record. Now the surplus record. If you get, this is a separate website, and it has 60,000 industrial assets and a bunch of companies on there that ship again. All right, and I've made a lot of money off that website. You know what these things do? If you search correctly, they're going to lean. They're going to link you to other places that have more information. This job is about information, this relationships and how you use them. This job isn't about waiting around for people to give you something because it's not going to happen. I get tons of calls all the day. You know, basically, I'll probably get 50 calls a week on people. Um, why don't you train me for free because I don't have time and I'm in this job to make money. Nothing comes for free in this life. I clue anybody looking for free. I don't want anybody for free. You know, quite frankly, because if you're not going to make an investment in yourself, you're not going to last in the industry. And, you know, it's just one of those things. You're going to have to go out there and get it and take it. All right. Look, you got a lot of lead sources here I've just gave you for whether produce, whether some industrial stuff, some agricultural stuff. You rookies out there that aren't making any money and want to make some money, go to my website at www.freightbrokertrainer.com. Contact us toll free at 855-269-9100. Once again, our website is www.freightbrokertrainer.com, and the toll-free number is 855-269-9100. Get in our next training class. We'll show you how to do the job correctly. There is no one in this industry that knows about as much about moving freight as we do. We've been doing it for 20 years, and we do a damn good job. Where other people are making $400 on loads, I've made forty grand on one load, all right, several times. And we still make the $400 hits, too. That's what pays the light bills. But we like to go whale fishing every now and then. Contact us today. I hope you enjoy these videos. We hope you get something out of them, truly. Thanks. We're signing off. Please view our YouTube channel.